So one of the things that is amazing to me is that uh, that people are lending governments uh, money with negative interest. Seventeen trillion dollars mm -hmm. is lent out, and people are going to get back less than they've paid, less than they've given. And when you think about that, uh, the government, they're lending it to governments, and the governments have said, we are going to make your money worth less. So the governments are uh, devaluing the currency against things, and you're giving them money that you're not going to get back for an extended period of time and not going to make any money on that, you're make, making less. And the reason that that's happening, I think, is incredible fear. And the reason you have so much fear is that 10 or 11 years ago, you've gone through this terrible financial crisis. And so people still remember, you've lost a generation of investors, just like you did after 73, 74, just like you did in the 1930s. So you lost a whole bunch of people that will never invest again. I was listening to Jeff uh, Trout uh, us, us out this morning, and he said that uh, his daddy told him that what is really interesting, you know, he should never uh, worry about good things happen to, uh, to companies that are really cheap, that stocks that are really cheap. Mm -hmm. Now, my parents, they never were able to invest in stocks, but if, I, if they had, uh, and uh, they wouldn't have known what a growth stock was or a value stock was, but they would have said, if my dad learned about it, he said, would have said, well, good things happen to growth stocks. We invest in growth stocks for the long term, and don't worry about all these things that everyone, uh, that you read about or you hear on television every day. Ron, I, that's, I, I that's appreciate... that's what's given us this good performance. I appreciate your long-term view, uh, but for investors who maybe don't have the same time frame as you, would you tell them that they would be foolish or they were foolish if they were selling last week in an 800-point uh, decline for the Dow? Would you be telling them, you know, stay the course, don't worry about everything that everyone's worried about all around you? I would be telling them that. And, in fact, so my family and I are now... You know, I had a negative net worth in 1970, and we're now the largest investors in our mutual funds. And I invest every... So even after that's the case, I still invest every single month. And in the first uh, week of August, when the market was uh, acting erratic and when it had fallen sharply, uh, I tripled the investment that I make every month in the funds that month, uh, that week, rather. So basically, when I invest, you know, month in, month out, every month, consistently, that's what advisors do. That's what advisors for individuals, financial advisors for individuals, uh, they're getting paid for advising people how to manage their money to, or manage money for them. And the average mutual fund probably makes 6 or 7% a year. The average investor in the funds makes 3 or 4%. The reason for that is they're always buying at the wrong time and selling at the wrong time. They buy high and sell low because, because they're emotional, because they read what is happening and they say, oh, my God, this is going to be terrible. I should have my money in cash. And so that's the way they react. And a good financial advisor or a good, you know, brokerage firms where they have their models, their job and they earn their salt by, by getting people not to sell when it's a bad time to sell and not to buy when it's a bad time to sell, but trying to do things consistently. I've spoken before uh, on your show about what a millennial should do. And millennials, I believe, somehow when they get to be 22 or 23 years old, if they get their parents or someone or somehow get their hands on $5,000 a year and invest $5,000 a year, what that's going to do for them, if all they do, they invest in a low-cost index fund. That's what they should do. Get a low-cost index fund, make 6 7 8% a year. And what happens, that $5,000 a year, at the end of 10 years, it's $100,000. At the end of 20 years, it's uh, 300000 if you get historic rates of return. At the end of uh, 30 years, that's 20 years. At the end of 30 years, it's $800,000. So you get to be almost a millionaire by investing $5,000 a year. That's what you have to do. You can't be afraid.